Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're looking at Polestar. Do we need a new CEO at the Polestar company? That's a very good question because it's a question that's on the horizon. Now I saw this question being raised by one of my subscribers on my latest Polestar video. And it simply said, love the Polestar videos as always. They're having a shareholders meeting at the end of the month with voting on potentially new CEO and shares buyback. So this is a shock. I was quite surprised. So for one, Steve-O, thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for supporting. I really appreciate that information. That was particularly helpful because it actually got me to look into the, the information. So you actually said that it's in the new 6K filing. I looked up that information. So that's what we want to go through today. The Form 6K Polestar Automotive Holding Company filing. And along with that, I want to ask the question, do we actually need a new CEO at Polestar? Now, this is something that I've heard people said many times. They, you know, people always commenting on my videos saying that they need a new CEO at Polestar. I'm not so convinced a new CEO can fix all of our problems. First, we have to understand the problems that Polestar is facing. The biggest problem that Polestar is facing is production, a lack of production. I posted this article in the middle of May, Polestar's Q1 2023 report. The delivery guidance fell from 80K to 60 to 70K. That's the biggest problem that we're facing. Not to mention the Polestar 3 SUV is delayed, not because of Polestar, but because of the platform that this vehicle sits upon. The platform is developed by Volvo, and apparently there's some other issues to do with the car's technological system that they probably just want to perfect before releasing this product. A lot of these things have nothing to do with Polestar. They're Volvo and Polestar is using the components, a lot of the components. That's why the interior of this vehicle looks so similar to a Volvo vehicle especially the vehicle that it shares platform with, the Volvo EX90. Interior looks almost identical, but not quite. So that's the biggest issue that we're facing on Polestar. And for a lot of, for a lot of people, they will probably blame the fact that the stocks, the, the price of the stock is so cheap. They'll probably blame it on this. And I understand that to a certain extent. However, how will a new CEO fix this problem? Polestar and the Polestar CEO have no say in how Volvo runs their company. Volvo owns Polestar. So whatever negative effects that Volvo is experiencing, Polestar is likely to experience the same effects because we're using Volvo's factories. We're relying on Volvo's for their platform for the Polestar 3. So a lot of the Polestar issues are actually coming from Volvo. The reason why we have less vehicles being delivered, we don't have any Polestar factories. We're using Volvo factories. The Polestar CEO cannot go to Volvo and say, listen, you need to start making more Polestar. They can't really do that because you're the Polestar CEO. You cannot command Volvo, not even close, not even remotely. They command you. Polestar is a subsidiary to Volvo. So I think it's less on the CEO of Polestar because the CEO can't really change these fundamental things. There's one big criticism that I do believe that the CEO could make a big difference. That's the publication of the brand. That's the public awareness of the brand, the advertising, the public knowledge of this brand. That's the CEO's responsibility to make sure that their marketing department is up to standards. It's making the best use of modern technology to help this brand gain traction. So perhaps Polestar CEO is not taking the modern approach to advertising or to getting the general young market excited about Polestar vehicles. Perhaps our current CEO isn't doing a good job at that. And I'll admit, I do think Polestar and the Polestar CEO could do a better job at marketing these vehicles and advertising these vehicles. Not to mention finding a way of doing this, which is more cost efficient. In the last six or seven months, the Polestar CEO has actually been tweeting on Twitter a lot more than he's ever done in Polestar's history. And I think this is an attempt to market the brand better, better connect with the people who support the brand, such as me, you, the ones who are watching, 
basically taking a page out of Elon Musk's book. That's what Elon does to market his company. He just tweets away, just tweet the craziest things. Sometimes they're positive, sometimes they're negative. Very controversial figure. I get that Polestar wants to be a little bit more careful than, than Tesla because Elon can say whatever and Tesla vehicles probably still sold, but for Polestar, it's, it's not the same. They can't just say whatever they want and still sell vehicles. It's kind of like the Mark Zuckerberg effect. Mark Zuckerberg can say or do whatever he wants. He's still gonna be the owner and CEO of Meta Facebook. Nothing will ever change. He has the majority votes. So essentially he can do whatever he wants with that company. And to a certain extent, it's, it's kind of the same with Tesla, Elon Musk and uh, SpaceX. Elon Musk has such a big ownership in these companies, he can do almost whatever he wants. And we've seen positives and negative to that effect. But we've certainly learned a lot and seen a lot of positive. I think a lot of CEO have learned from Elon Musk that you can be a little bit more public and promote your brand instead of being, you know, cognito. CEOs, traditional CEOs are actually extremely cut off and incognito, except for people like, I don't know, maybe Bill Gates, you know, those guys were a little bit different. Maybe Steve Jobs were a little bit different, but there's a lot of other CEOs that have just been a, a bit more private. That's tradition. But guys like Bill Gates, guys like Steve Jobs, guys like Elon Musk, they definitely change what it is to be a CEO. Now, before we jump into our filing, let's just look at the share price. $3.32. It's undervalued at $7 billion. It is extremely undervalued. In fact, to understand more about this, I recommend you reading this article. It's on our Monument website. This is two EV stocks under $10 with big potential, Polestar and NEO. Basically, I explained just how Polestar is undervalued and how they will substantially move past this valuation that they currently are in the next five to 10 years. Now on the filing, our Form 6K filing. This was very interesting. Now I read through this filing. I didn't necessarily see any votes about the new, possibly new CEO. However, I did see vote on new directors. Now I was never under the assumption that director and CEO can be used jointly. I, I never had that idea. I always thought they were slightly different roles, similar, but slightly different. However, in this instance, if it's the same, I do apologize. So it says here, Polestar Automotive first annual general meeting will be held at 12 p.m. BTS time on Wednesday, the 28th of June at the office of Kirkland and Ellis, 30th St. Mary Axe, London. This is in London, actually. That's quite interesting. So it's been a very important year for Polestar Group. Polestar Automotive was admitted to trade in NASDAQ Stock Exchange. This is addressed to all of us. It says, dear fellow shareholders. So they're talking to all of us. So that's good to know. It also says, I want to thank all of those within the business that helped this achievement through their extraordinary effort and dedication in difficult market conditions. Yeah, it's a difficult market for Polestar, but it's good for me because I love bu buying cheap shares. And I'll continue to say that for a very long time. It continues to say, the board and I look forward to our continued engagement with you, our shareholders. The AGM is an important opportunity for the board to request from members authority on important subjects such as the company continues on its journey as a listed entity, which means that will it stay as a public company? That's basically what that means, right? So I, I didn't know that was included in the vote. So, wow. Um, I always want Polestar to stay on the stock exchange. I don't want that to change ever. It'd be a really sad day. And it probably wouldn't be the best for a lot of people who've already bought into the stock at a higher price, which is why it's always recommended don't invest in IPOs because the stock prices usually fall rapidly afterwards. Hey, it's just history. I'm sure it's not personal, but that's why it goes on to say and pursue our ambition to improve society by using design and technology to accelerate this shift towards sustainable mobility. Now we go on to voting. The notice of AGM, which follows this letter, set out the business to be considered at the meeting. Explanatory notes on each resolutions are set out on page four to six this document. Voting on each of the resolution to be put to shareholders at the AGM meeting will be conducted by poll. 
So this is in line with best practices and ensures a more accurate final results, which reflects the voting preference of all shareholders who've lodged a proxy vote. So it goes on to say how we can, you know, submit a proxy vote and as such. It goes on to talk about the external auditors. I found this part quite interesting, but um, you can check it out for yourself. It just talks about who they're approving, um, appointing for to become post or auditors. And of course, election of directors. Remember, it says directors. So here's my question. Is a director basically a CEO? I'm, I'm still not entirely sure. Class one directors, namely Mr. Davy Richard, Dongnu Daniel Lee and Thomas Ingalif stand for the election at the AGM. This is in line with the article of association of the company. Further details in these directors' biographies can be found on page 4 to 5. So I do apologize if I didn't pronounce those names correctly. It's never been my strong suit. Now onto the notice of the general meeting and some of the areas they will be voting on, such as Resolution 1. Report and accounts to receive the company's annual reports and audited financial statements for the period ended 31st of July 2022. Resolution 2. Directors. Directors. Remuneration report. Resolution 2. Remuneration report for the period ended in 31st of December 2023. To receive and approve directors. Remuneration report for the period ended in 31st of December 2022. Resolution 3. Renumeration policy to receive and approve renumeration policy. Election of director. So, to elect Mr. Thomas Ingleth as a director. Resolution 5. Election of director. To elect Mr. Dong Hu Daniel Lee as a director. Resolution 6. Election of director. To elect Mr. David Richter as director. So, three possible candidates for director right there. And it goes on to say in resolution 7. Reappointment of auditor to appoint Deloitte LLP and Deloitte AB as a joint um, auditor for the Polestar company, I believe. Resolution 9. Purchase of own shares that the company is thereby generally and unconditionally authorized to make market purchases within the meaning of Section 6934 of the Company Act 2006 of Ordinary Class Shares. This is of 0.01 cents each in the capital of company provided that the maximum number of ordinary shares, the maximum number of ordinary Class A shares hereby authorized to be purchased 70 plus million. That's, that's wild. 70 million, 156,338. Wow, that's... Uh, Quite a lot. And then there's also resolution 10, notice of general meeting. Now, like I said, I'm not entirely sure if director basically stands for CEO. It could be. This could be it. If if this does change, it could mean that Thomas Ingleff will not be our, our director slash CEO anymore. I could. I hope I'm not wrong because um, I always thought director and CEO has different meaning. Similar kind of job, but slightly different meaning. But maybe in this case, it, it, it means the same thing. So an important part is also the share buyback. So what do we think about this? Possibly new director at Polestar and obviously share buyback. How will the share buyback influence um, potential shareholders? What I prefer for Polestar to do is a stock split because they have a lot of stock. I prefer to them for this, just do a stock split. There's also some more resolution as well, and this, I believe, is on page 8. I, I won't really go through this, but you can check it out if you'd like. I think this is just the differences in candidates, such as this one is for Thomas Ingleth. There's a little bit of information about Thomas Ingleth, his skill and experience. That's really fascinating. There's also one about um, Daniel Lee and David Richter, so very interesting. But that is it for this video. I find it very interesting that Polestar is looking at a potential buyback or a potential director change slash CEO change. It would be very interesting if we have a change in CEO. But if we have a change in CEO, is this good for the brand or is this potentially disastrous? Only time will tell. But I do trust in Volvo. I do trust in Volvo. So if I trust in Volvo, I have to trust in Polestar long term. Well, I don't have to, but I choose to. But that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to see more. 
Remember to subscribe to our newsletter. That's the best way to stay up to date with everything that we discuss. Thank you. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.